Hello Groveland Township. Today's video, the state of the township for 2016, is being generated early in June 2016. The purpose of today's video is to kind of recap for everybody, especially those that are not the real long-term residents, some of the key issues that this township's been operating under and the situation that we're in and what we think will be happening going forward in the future. I'm going to break it down into several sections. I'm going to talk a bit about growth and managing the growth in the township about fiscal responsibility and some quality of life issues and then I'm going to kind of wrap it up with some resident communication issues for you and a few interesting facts that you may or may not be aware of if you haven't lived out here a long time. First of all let me talk about some of the growth. For those of you who don't know prior to the 2008 Great Recession the township used to build about 30 homes a year. After the economic downturn in 2008 building virtually came to a halt here and for several years we didn't build a single new home. It's picked up some now with a lot of additions and outbuildings and about eight houses a year so we're going in the right direction but it's not nearly as robust as it was. The most interesting issues we have to deal with on growth are in two different areas. First of all most of you are aware that we're trying to secure an ORV slash outdoor adventure park complex here in Groveland Township. This is a major effort on the part of the township and we have been working with the Department of Natural Resources in the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Department in trying to establish a unique project which has never been done anywhere in Oakland County. The intention of this program is to develop a, first in Oakland County an ORV park which will eventually expand to outdoor adventures so that there's a whole host of family oriented entertainment issues that residents in the area can utilize. The Outdoor Adventure Park is scheduled to hopefully start off on the two pits which are currently located around Mount Holly. And we know that most of the response from the general public has been overwhelmingly positive to this. Now right now the DNR is currently in the process of trying to prepare a revised offer for the two park owners. So we're hopeful that later this year they will successfully conclude their negotiations and when we find out for sure that the park's going forward we'll be sure to let you know through the cable channel, the local newspapers and any other menu or, uh, uh, or any other items that we might be able to utilize to keep you aware of this. Now. The park will end up being the first of its type and the reason we're so excited about it is we feel that it is the optimum scenario. The state of Michigan will be developing its 103rd park which will be the OR park, ORV park here and it will be managed by Oakland County Parks which is a first for the Department of Natural Resources. The reason we have supported this effort is we feel the Oakland County Parks people do a wonderful job on their parks management and will allow us as a community to have some input into issues that may arise on the park. Now secondly, the thing that uh, we have to deal with most is really the Renaissance Festival. I don't know if all of you are aware of this, but the Renaissance Festival, which has been out here for several decades, is actually located in Holly Township the entire festivals in Holly Township and about half of the parking lots are in Holly Township. The other half of the parking lots at the front of the facility are actually in Groveland Township. And we had made some changes over the years which you cannot move 200,000 plus people in and out of the festival on seven weekends and not notice it. But it worked pretty well for several years. Then the economy started to turn around and unbeknownst to all of us their attendance started shooting up. In the last two years they've had record attendance and in 2015 we had the worst managed traffic we've ever seen. So we've reached out to Holly Township and the Renaissance Festival and said this situation has to be managed much better going forward. And in the future you'll see another video on the Renaissance Festival on all the changes that we're bringing to bear for 2016. I'm not saying you won't see 200,000 plus people coming in, but we're committed to making sure that the management of the facility is much better than it was last year. And I think you'll see that with all the changes in a future video. Those are the two biggest growth issues, if you will, in our own community because housing starts are still relatively slow. But let's talk a little bit about financial responsibility because over the last years, all communities have seen cuts, but the township here has seen some brutal cuts. In three years, when the economy tanked, we lost 43% of our property tax value base. 43% in three years. We still have not recovered from that and won't for years. 
We've also lost about 11% of our population in the 2010 census. Now it's going back up, but the census won't be redone until 2020. That also cost us 11% of our state revenue shared dollars. And just before that, the townships that used to receive statutory revenue were pretty much eliminated from the formula. So we've had three huge gaping holes in our revenue stream, which we had to figure out how to adjust and facilitate and handle. And we did a number of things. The board has maintained a very good and diligent focus on trying to maintain the financial needs of this community and doing it without seeking continual tax increases. So one of the things that you need to know that even though we've had these huge cuts, the township is virtually 100% debt free. Not only do we pay all of our bills, but we also have funded every future obligation we have to 100% or better. That means when you hear a lot of communities talking about post-employment or OPEB charges and huge debts that they've incurred, our township is 100% funded and 100% debt free, something that you won't find in many communities today. But beyond that, we'd like to say that you know the community stays so well focused on what we do that in the event that we do have the occasional court cases here, our township has never lost a single court case in the 20 years that I've been here. And we'll continue to pursue making sure that we apply the laws correctly and fairly. But let's talk about beyond just growth and fiscal responsibility, some of the quality of life issues that we all moved out here for. Most people moved out here because they love the large lots, the quiet rural residential environment, and don't really want to be next to the uh, shopping mall or the industrialized areas. We have had three master plans developed in our township and all three of them have had public input for the development of the master plan. All three of those plans have been fairly consistent in their overall development. Once we know the outcome of this recreational ORV park project later this year, we plan to again visit the master plan for Groveland Township. And at that time, you as a resident will have ample opportunity at various public meetings to have input into what you'd like to see the same in the community and where you might like to see some changes. So that's going to be happening most likely next year after we have a conclusion on the proposed negotiations for the ORV park. So we think that those kinds of issues give all of us an opportunity to be able to address where we're going in the future and you might want to stay tuned for that in future videos. But this whole township board has been focused really on trying to provide methods of improving the quality of life and doing things for our residents that normally are outside their purview or their ability to be able to impact themselves. And let me give you a couple of initial examples. About 16 years ago, we were faced with a situation where gas was not available to almost the entire township. People wanted it because natural gas is about half the cost to heat your home that propane and other sources are, and it's very convenient. No need for an outside pig storage for the gas. When we couldn't get the gas lines run efficiently, we literally developed a program with consumers' power that I have never seen duplicated anywhere in the country yet, where we actually funded the gas line main expansion and provided gas lines to almost every single road in the township and we did it all in one year. That project meant that at the completion of the installation we turned on over 500 homes in our township onto natural gas who have been saving about half the cost of their heating bills for the last 16 years. The project's completed now and there's over 700 homes on it, but all of them are on a gas line project that really Groveland Township together as a unit made available for our residents or otherwise we'd have been trying to do it now instead of 15 or 16 years ago. With the success of that program we took the next one on. Our township treasurer Dave Axe had advised the, the fire department about the ISO rating system. For those of you who don't know what that is, ISO stands for Insurance Services Organization. It's a group owned by a bunch of insurance companies and they use this group to evaluate fire departments for fire protection so that they know what premium to charge. Most small rural fire departments like ours are usually a 8, 9, or 10 fire insurance rating because there's no water distribution system, they have highly uh, dependent re requirements on volunteer firefighters, and they're not really as well documented as some other ones. 
But Chief McGee and his team did a yeoman's job on attacking that progress, or excuse me, that program. What they did was actually develop all the procedures and practices necessary. The township board backed the project with the development of a second fire station and the investment in a number of hydrants that you see around the township that look very much like agricultural, high duty, heavy volume uh, fire uh, water wells with fire department fittings on the end of them for the fire trucks. That whole project after about a two, three year program allowed us to go back to ISO and get the insurance service rating for our community knocked from a 9, 10 down to basically a 4 for every home in this township except about 11 of them. And so now we enjoy a much lower insurance premium if your insurance company uses the ISO rating. Not every insurance company uses ISO. So it's to your value if you're a newer resident and weren't aware of this program that you should look into seeing whether or not your insurance company has you rated as an ISO 4. When that program went in originally, the year my insurance for my homeowner's insurance got renewed after the evaluation, my premium dropped 32% in one year. And we had lots of people calling us that had similar kinds of reductions. So I would ask you to check with your insurance provider, make sure you're rated ISO 4. If it's one of the companies that does not use ISO, you might want to shop around because it makes a huge difference in the premiums. Those two programs kind of set the stage for how the whole township board acts at trying to address issues in this township, and that is how do we provide benefit, lower the cost of living, improve the quality of life, and do things for our residents that individually they can't do on their own. <clears throat> well, one of the things that we're, we also did more recently was last year we converted the 10 lights that we pay for in this township from different kinds of lamping arrangements to LED. It provided a significant reduction in the cost of operating the street lights that we provide. And in fact, it only had about a three-year break-even analysis, so it was a good project to do going forward. We also have a small park, for those who are not aware of it, behind the township office. It's got a little pavilion, a couple of barbecues, and a playscape. If you would like to use that park as a resident for some sort of a family reunion or gathering, it's available for your use at no charge. You just need to schedule it through the ladies in the office so that there's no conflict with schedules on it. We also last year completed the paving of the last gravel road that approaches a paved roads intersection. We have taken that project on. It had to uh, stall for a couple of years when the economy really tanked, but last year we freed up some money and we did three more intersections and those were the last three gravel roads that approach an existing paved road. And by doing those aprons at the beginning, it greatly extends the maintenance cycle on the roads because it's generally people starting at the intersection where the tires tear it up and put the ruts in. So this improves that as well. Our biggest program going forward as I said earlier, will be the ORV park. And the reason we're so interested in that is because that project, I think, will set the stage for our master plan revision and also put an end to an ongoing problem that we've had out here. Over the years, there have been four attempts at putting landfills in or adjacent to our township. Three of those attempts were on the property that's now being uh, selected for the potential ORV park. So we think the ORV activity and outdoor adventure activity fits in with the recreational nature of our, pro of our uh, houses out here and the community at large, and it will put a permanent end to any future efforts that might come about to try and put a landfill into those same uh, facilities again. We also spend a lot of time looking at some of the community development activities that we can use to support the youth in our community. Our township clerk, Pam Mazich, and the de deputy clerk, Patty Back, are our representatives on the Brandon Groveland Youth, and uh, Diane Howell, our trustee, is the representative on the Holly Youth Organization. Last year, the Brandon Groveland Youth developed programs for uh, drug prevention and bullying prevention that were extremely successful. And to that end, this year they're developing a program within the middle school that will be used for those same issues. Our representatives feel very strongly that the youth in our community are our future and we want to make sure we invest with them in the right way. The last issue I want to bring you up on is really resident communications. We have tried to make it easy for our residents to communicate with us. For those of you who are not aware of it, 
besides running on the cable channel if you don't have cable you might want to tell your neighbors uh, if, if they don't know this that you can also see the videos that we produce on the township website at www.grovelandtownship.net when you pull the web page up on the very first page in the upper right hand corner there's a YouTube logo if you click on that YouTube logo our video technician has listed all of our more recent videos and so they can watch it anytime they want at a computer at their convenience if you have Comcast you're able to watch these shows but these same videos are also on our website one of the other things that we do for our residents is we have a unique arrangement whereby through Bedrock's assistance at the gravel pit located at I-75 and Grange Hall Road next to the scale house is a dumpster service that is basically available to our residents year round. This means that we don't have to have the proverbial call from the resident who says, hey I'm looking for annual cleanup days, when is that? And Those calls usually came in the Monday after that weekend. A lot of communities and most of them around us have an annual cleanup day, sometimes two. We have this dumpster service available all year for our residents. It is at no charge and it's just available for one permit per year per resident. It is not for commercial use. So if you haven't used it, that's something you can use. We also are a founding member in the NOHAS Consortium for Oakland County. That means that all of our residents have the ability to use NOHAS to dispose of paints and hazardous materials that you may have around your house that you want to get rid of and get rid of them environmentally the safe way. The cost for that service is about $10 per resident that goes through it. The actual cost is around $50. The township picks up the balance of the cost. So besides the dumpster service, the no-has days, our fire departments also have meeting rooms that you can rent from them. Uh, it's subject to fire department availability. And for those of you who are newer into the area, you may not realize it, but the black and white patrol car that drives through our township periodically is our ordinance officer. Jeremy will patrol your particular house. If you're a snowbird and go down to Arizona or Florida in the winter, or you're just going on vacation for a week or two and you'd like somebody to keep an eye on your house, if you speak directly to the ordinance officer, Jeremy will end up adding you to his tour and check on your house periodically for you. If you give him a number he can contact you with, he'll let you know if anything unusual shows up. For resident convenience, we also have our township office open on Wednesday evenings until 7 p.m. Some of our residents cannot uh, get to the township for some issues they want to address because it conflicts with their work schedule, so we're open on Wednesdays year-round till 7 p.m. As I said, if you don't have Comcast, you can get most of this information on the cable channel, but a new thing that's going to be available to our residents here on July the 20th from 1 until 2.30 the Register of Deeds at Oakland County will be here and she will make available to you copies of birth certificates, uh, property descriptions, registry uh, of a business, uh, become a notary public review concealed pistol weapon licenses and marriages licenses. So any of those things that you might typically go to the county clerk for you'll be able to come here on July the 20th between 1 and 2.30 and do it conveniently right in the township office. Before I sign off here, I just want to give you a couple of other convenient facts because most people don't really have a good understanding on how property taxes work or how they compare. So I'll give you a couple of key figures to keep in mind. If you live in Groveland Township and you're in the Brandon School District, a little over half the township is, your millage rate for your principal residence is 33.7302 mills. If you live in Brandon Township and you're in the Brandon School District, your millage rate is not 33.7 but 40.7913. If you live in Grovena Township and a little less than half the township is on the Holly School District, your millage is 29.2302 and that's because the Holly School District has much lower debt load on it. But if you're in Holly Township in the Holly School District, your millage load is 29.9, a fraction of a mill less than ours. And if you're in Springfield Township, it's 31.5688, a couple of mills higher than ours. Our ISO rating is virtually four for almost every house in the township. The other three communities, Brandon, Holly, and Springfield, are six tens, where the villages tend to be six, and the peripheral areas around them tend to be the ten. We have a dumpster service available year-round. The other three do not. They usually have one or two cleanup days. 
We are a founding member in the No Has Consortium to get rid of hazardous materials and electronics at your home four times a year. Springfield is also in that program this year, but Brandon and Holly Township are not. In addition, as I said earlier, not only is everything paid, but all of our obligations are fully funded. So as always, if you have any questions or comments about the township, I'd like you to feel free to email us, call, leave a voicemail at night, or come in on a Wednesday evening. We're happy to talk to you about any suggestions or ideas you might want to cover. If you go to our township website and you click on any of our names, it will automatically email address it to the appropriate officer. So until the next video, Groveland, I hope everything goes well for you. I hope you take advantage of the benefits of being here in Groveland Township, and we look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.